The saying, sometimes you get addicted to the pain you know, spoken by the narrator is the best way to sum up Hippocampus dark fantasy adventure. Developer Bad Vices Games and publisher Valkyrie Initiative have released a beast of a game. So let me break it down for you and get something out of the way first. This game is frustratingly addictive and one of the hardest, if not the hardest games I have ever played. But for some reason, I keep coming back for more punishment and I absolutely love it. Now, as I've stated in some of my more difficult reviews, I don't rate or judge a game on its difficulty because there are some extremely skilled gamers out there who love a good challenge. And with Hippocampus, I knew when it was time to throw in the towel and admit defeat. I had spent over two hours on a particular area of the game and just could not complete the platforming challenge. For this reason, it's not fair to developers to give a full review, hence this first impressions of it. But I will do my best to put the game in perspective for you. So, as far as the story goes, from what I took from the time I played and what I read on it, you play Lord Mobius, who is in search of his fiance. He consumes a dangerous hallucinogen called Datura Stramonium to bring forth the memories of his lost fiance, Lorelei, all so they can come together once again. But in his path, he must face monstrosities produced by his hallucinations, solve puzzles to access new areas, and on top of that, he needs to discover the truth behind the disappearance of Lorelei. Now for the most interesting and important part of the game, the gameplay. I was sent a beta code from the publisher for those of you who are wondering, but the game is not a pricey one. It'll run you a reasonable $11.99 on the Steam store. And being it was in beta, I did encounter a few bugs and irritating issues I hope they address. For instance, many times I got stuck in a wall or going up a pillar lift. The UI would freeze up on me or the lock on target wouldn't shut off after death. But the most annoying bug was when playing with the controller, the sensitivity would always set back to default. Now I found none of these bugs were game breaking and probably could easily be patched. Like I said, the most interesting part of Hippocampus is the gameplay. I haven't come across a game quite like it since the legacy of Kane's Soul Reaper. It even has that dark gothic feel. And in fact, this is what caught my attention to the game in the first place. So, at the beginning of the game, you're introduced to a necessary tutorial, because without it, you'd be quite lost. And to be honest, I found the controls to be awkward at first, but as soon as I got used to them, they worked well for a platformer. I was also presented with a sword and axe as my default weapons, and the game appeared to utilize the common hack and slash, lock on target, and attack method that many RPGs use today. But the lack of a block feature made combat extremely difficult. There was also a power attack feature that consumes your health when used. It made for a unique health system, but I didn't get too familiar with it as it was difficult to use. I also came across a variety of enemies from slow to fast requiring me to take a different approach to each encounter. Now for the platforming. This for me was the most difficult part and where I was defeated. At the beginning of the game it tells you to pay attention to your surroundings and believe me, this is some great advice because the solutions to the puzzle may be right in front of your face. Fortunately in the game, the controls felt great and were well implemented. This really helped me with my general platforming. My only complaint was that at default, the controller sensitivity should have been set at high because platforming on a low setting was nearly impossible. While playing, you're presented with a series of orbs and each does a different action indicated by its color. One may give you a boost in the air, another create a platform, or even teleport you to another location. But you must be quick when using these orbs because if you miss your opportunity to catch one, your platforming days are over. And that brings me to your continuous respawning. At first, I felt embarrassed at my death count, but I soon realized that this was the intent of the game. The game's narrator even encourages you to keep at it and not give up. And I definitely kept at it for hours. One last thing about the game, there are some boss fights in there, but I unfortunately never got far enough into it to encounter any. So the graphics are really nothing special, and that goes for the sound effects and soundtrack as well. But the atmosphere, is another story because I absolutely loved it. The dark and dreary look of Mobius looked fantastic. Also, your creepy but empty surroundings had you feeling like you were stuck in an endless world of mazes. 
There was even a dark gritty tint added to the game that really gave it that gothic feel. In the end, Hippocampus Dark Fantasy Adventure is an extremely hard but addicting game that I'm not finished with. I will definitely be coming back to this title for some more punishment. If you think you're up to the challenge, give it a go. Thanks for watching, and if you like our content, hit that like button and subscribe. Also, check out the BG4G Hub website for the latest news, reviews, and everything gaming.